Hey, kiddos, it's story time. So, uh, put your pajamas on, get your teddy bear, snuggle up in bed. I'll tuck you in. Yes, you may have a glass of water. No, you may not watch cartoons. No. No. Lay down. No cartoons. It's like it's like 10 o'clock. You have school tomorrow. Just lay down and listen to the story, okay? I get to pick it tonight, and uh, we're gonna read Their Morals and Ours by Leon Trotsky. Because you are a very precocious child. So when I started getting more interested in actually reading leftist theory and not just arguing about it with people on the internet, I looked around for audiobooks so I could listen while I was at work, but was kind of disappointed with the limited selection available online. And I figured if we want to grow our movement and bring young comrades into the fold, it's important that the tools of political education can be accessible and digestible. So I thought I could try to make some of my own audio recordings. It's also a fun, low stakes way for me to practice my infantile voice work recording and audio editing skills. So we're going to read some audiobooks. Now, I'm not the only lefty on the internet doing things to make theory more accessible. There are several other people and institutions you should check out. I will leave some links. The internet archives on Marxist.org have a small selection of audiobooks. I found some audio recordings on YouTube, and LibriVox also has some audio recordings. There's the YouTuber Radical Reviewer who reads different important works of political theory and gives you a clear, digestible analysis in summary. He's also a dog who talks and he is a very good boy. On a more specific note, there's Dr. Kristen Godsey, who is a professor of Eastern European Studies. She has a podcast all about Alexandra Kollontai, who was an old Bolshevik and women's rights advocate. On the podcast, she reads excerpts of Colin Ty's writing, and they talk about it and break it down. So the piece that we're reading today, Their Morals and Ours, it was published in June of 1938 in a journal called The New International, which was a publication of the Socialist Workers' Party in the United States. So I assume that it was originally written in English, which means these are the actual words of the author and not a translation, and that's kind of cool. I kind of like how Trotsky writes. He's very highbrow and wordy and erudite, but under all of that, he has this dry wit that can be really funny, and there's a lot of personality in this writing, I feel. Although, content warning, some of the language is a bit uh, politically incorrect, blah blah blah, time and place it was written, blah blah blah, author's intention, just letting you know. In 1938, Trotsky was hanging out in Mexico. He had been exiled from the Soviet Union for the last several years, but the rivalry he had with Stalin is still going on at this point. And, uh, and, uh, spoiler alert, this did not end very well for Trotsky. You probably know the story. Another thing that's going on is we're about to go into World War II. So the fascists are at the height of their power in Europe, and the communists are spending a lot of energy fighting the fascists. And various different groups of people from different political camps aren't exactly sure what to make of this situation. No one really knows for sure how it's going to play out. And just like today, when we have these conflicts, we also tend to get a lot of moral hand-wringing about the correct and incorrect way to go about the fight. You probably remember a couple years ago when everyone was arguing about whether or not it was okay for people to punch Nazis, or if Antifa was just as bad as the fascists due to the fact they use violence. And if you're on the left, you've probably heard a lot of this ideologically confused rhetoric about how actually the Nazis were also socialists, and Stalin was actually a fascist, and both sides. What about freedom of speech? What about property rights? You know, things like that. Well, people were also having those debates in the 1930s. So in this piece, Trotsky talks about that. You know. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Another piece of background. 
This work was dedicated to Trotsky's son, Leon Sadov, or Lev Sadov in Russian. He's named for his dad. And for some reason, all of his kids ended up taking their mother's last name. I don't know the story behind that. But Leon Sadov was also politically active, and he ended up getting murdered by the Stalinists right around the time that this was written. So, our hats off to Leon Jr. Rest in power, brother. This is my first time doing a reading like this, so please don't roast me if it's bad, which it will be. The most important thing, in my opinion, that I've worked to achieve is that my speech is intelligible and you are able to understand and remember what's being read. I'm also linking articles, essays, videos, podcast episodes written about this work by other leftists. Um, some of them will be critical, some will be in praise. You can check those out too. So without further ado, their morals and ours. <laughs>